distribution industries are not as complex from the ERP perspective, but they get equally nuanced. We review the distribution ERP systems each year. So we are going to do this for 2024 as well. That's what we have discussed in this video. So let's dive in. Everyone, my name is Sam Gupta. I am principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. We help our clients with digital transformation strategy, change management, enterprise technology selection, as well as implementation. On that note, let's go back to today's topic, which is going to be top 10 distribution ERP systems in 2024 in this year's ranking we have made some major changes the increased ranking that you are going to see with microsoft dynamics fno sap s4 hana business central oracle erp cloud and the degrees in ranking that you are going to see with acumatica the criteria that we utilize to compile this list is the product share the acquisition strategy focused on distribution erp products product roadmap community ecosystem win rate technology strategy as well as the investors so those are some of the factors that we utilize in compiling this list so now let's look at the list <music> Number 10 on our list is SAP Business One. Last year, we had Oracle Cloud ERP at this spot. So SAP Business One, if you are not familiar, they targeted smaller distribution companies with one legal entity and multiple warehouses. The reason why SAP Business One ranks lower is because of their progress in cloud. The cloud product is just not as mature as the on-prem variant. For the most part, the on-prem had a lot of add-on from many different resellers and that ecosystem was very well developed, but that momentum is not there in the cloud. The pros for SAP Business One is you have global functionality, rich financial traceability, the capabilities of HANA that you are going to see with SAP Business One, which makes it very enterprise grade product overall from the technology perspective, but the operational capabilities are going to be limited, which is a huge challenge for small to medium sized businesses that might not have as much IT maturity as in the enterprise space. The cons for business one is their uh, cloud solution is, is uh, leaner compared to the on-prem variant. Uh, the last mile capabilities are going to be limited as well as the uh, integrations are going to be limited as well that you are going to find with some of the other products such as NetSuite, Acumatica. You just have far more options from the best of breed perspective just because those ecosystems are booming. So that's number 10. Now, number nine on our list is Cispro. Last year, we had SAP Business One here. So Cispro targets smaller distribution companies, especially in the FMCG space, one legal entity and multiple warehouses. And when you compare the FMCG versus the industrial use cases, these two are completely different verticals and they require very different capabilities. So the product that do really well in the FMCG space, they are not going to be as great fit in the industrial space. So Cispro specifically targets the food and beverage distributors as well as uh, the FMCG distributors. Cispro is also very unique overall from the product perspective. It's one of the most diverse solution out there in the smaller space, which is going to have your discrete manufacturing functionality, process manufacturing functionality built as part of the same product. So if you are going to be a distributor who has multiple business models that you need to support, you are going to find all of that with Cispro. The other advantage with Cispro is it's very robust financial product. So you are going to find very similar uh, capabilities from the ERP perspective, the ones that you find in SAP products. And that is going to be things such as your activity based costing. Cispro also has very food centric uh, capabilities when it comes to the way its MRP engine and the planning is designed. So 
that's very strong for the food and beverage distributors. The pros for SysPro is also going to be its technology. Initially, it was file-based, but now they have converted into slight more cloud-native, and it's going to have much deeper functionality in the cloud compared to SAP Business One, as well as the database is going to be SQL-based. The other comparable solution in their space, especially if you look at products from uh, ECI, some of those are not going to be SQL-based. They are still file-based. So that's a real differentiator for uh, SysPro. Now the cons for SysPro is the ecosystem. Even though they have a lot of partners and the consulting companies um, in uh, several regions, but their ecosystem is not going to be as prevalent as Microsoft, Acumatica, as well as uh, NetSuite. The other cons with SysPro is their last mile capabilities, especially if you look at in the industrial space, each back electrical, they are probably not the right fit just because the last mile capabilities that you are going to require from the industrial code perspective, compliance perspective, the TMS capabilities that you require, those might not be there with SysPro. And the integrations are going to be limited as well. So that's number nine. Now, number eight on our list is Oracle Cloud ERP. At this part, we had SysPro last year. So Oracle targets large distribution companies, especially the global companies, over a billion dollar in revenue worldwide. So the best use case for Oracle ERP is going to be the companies that are going to be slightly more retail centric that require best of breed TMS system that require OMS system. And if the companies are trying to keep all of the global instances in one ERP system, that's where Oracle is going to shine. But for the most part, uh, Oracle is going to be best fit for the corporate uh, enterprise ledger while you might use some of the operational ERP system at the subsidiary level, especially if those entities are going to have very diverse business model because building this functionality on top of Oracle Cloud ERP may get very expensive. They are not going to have the last mile capabilities for, for example, if you look at HVAC Electrical, all of these distribution patches, um, you know, Fastener, they also have very specific functionality that you require. And for the most part, the vanilla ERP is probably not going to be as great fit for those verticals. They might struggle. You would be spending a lot in the consulting fee as well. So the pros for Oracle Cloud ERP is WMS and TMS capabilities bundled with the ERP, but the design of WMS and TMS in general is very different with Oracle Cloud ERP compared to what you are going to see, let's say with SAP EWM, because the industries that Oracle targets are very, 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 very different compared to the other products. So the other advantage that you have with Oracle is proven solution for that large workload fortune thousand companies as well as the ecosystem is very prevalent as well. You are going to find a lot of consulting uh, companies as well as integrations that are going to be available with Oracle. They are also going to be available in geographies where other smaller solutions might not be available. The cons for Oracle Cloud ERP is the last mile capabilities might not be as pre-baked as you might find with the smaller solution. And it's not necessarily a distribution solution. The large majority of logos that Oracle has, they are going to be in public sector media, telecom, energy, healthcare. They have some exposure to distribution as well, but distribution is not necessarily their bread and butter. And it could be overwhelming for SMB distributors as well. So that's number eight. <music> Number seven on our list is Acumatica. Last year we had Info Cloud Suite distribution and Acumatica, we have reduced the ranking of Acumatica. The reason for that is because of the limited focus of the product. It's not as applicable in the global uh, geographies. It might not be present in every single country. So it's not as relevant as some of the other products. It also does not have as deep last mile functionality that you are going to find with some of the other solutions. So Acumatica targets the smaller distributors with revenue up to a hundred million dollar primarily focused on a couple of countries, majorly North America. And if you're looking for financial and global synergies, that could be a challenge with Acumatica just because it is operationally rich product. But for the most part, the global localization as well as the compliance functionality may not be there for larger organizations. The pros for Acumatica is 
their pricing and costing model is very friendly for B2B centric industries. It's very scalable. So it's really designed for those B2B distribution verticals. The consumption based pricing could be a pro, it could be a con. The reason for that is because the consumption based pricing could be very friendly for some of these smaller companies, depending upon how your transactions are structured, but sometimes it could be very unpredictable as well. So make sure you bet not only what your pricing is going to be as of today, but also in the next five years. The other advantage with Acumatica is the its ability to support diverse business models in the same database, same product uh, ranging from your construction to your field service. And in certain cases, you are going to have distributors who are going to be a little, who are going to have a little bit of manufacturing business model, construction business model, as well as field service business model. So you require all of these capabilities in the same product when you might look at some of the other products that may be operationally rich for the distribution functionality, but they might not be able to support all of these business models. So that's where Acumatica is really strong. Now the con for Acumatica is overall the global capabilities are going to be limited, not a fit for larger distributors and limited capabilities for B2C, especially if you are going to look for uh, CPG verticals, they require very different transactional workflow, very different pricing structure. So it might not be as friendly for B2C verticals. So that's number seven. Number six on our list is in four cloud suite distribution SXE product. In um, last year, we had Apicore Profit 21 at this part. So in four cloud suite distribution product targets industrial distributors with revenue up to 200 and $50 million. Now this is a very, very, very well penetrated in the distribution space. It's going to have integrations that are going to be common in the industrial distribution space that you might not find with the other products that might not be as penetrated in the industrial distribution space. So the pros for in four cloud suite a distribution product is rich industrial ERP distribution systems capabilities provided out of the box, pre-baked integrations with other industrial systems, the Infor OS is a huge plus because with Infor Cloud Suite, this is going to be part of the package. But with the other system, you are most likely going to pay additional licensing fee for the iPaaS that you might require. But at the same time, you are sort of tight coupling with Infor with the Infor OS capabilities as well. So it has pro as well as con as well. So the other cons that you are going to have with the Infor Cloud Suite industrial is limited capabilities to support diverse distributors. It's very, very, very specific to the distribution business model. But if these distribution business models are going to have any other business models as part of their business processes, for example, field service or manufacturing, that's where it is not going to have as deep capabilities. It might uh, support light assembly, but for the most part, let's say if you are very complex and manufacturing as well, then this might not be the best product for you. The data structure is weak when when you look at the warehouse specific data structure that you are going to require, especially around batch capabilities in the one to end scenarios, if you require those, then it might not be as scalable as intuitive built as part of your cloud suite distribution product. The other con that you are going to have for info cloud suite industrial is limited pre baked integrations for diverse businesses. So it is going to have pre-baked integrations for distribution businesses. But let's say if you have distribution plus manufacturing plus construction, that's where you are not going to find all of those integrations. And then you are going to be investing a lot in the consulting uh, as well as with integration. So that's number six. Number five on our list is Apicore Profit 21. Last year, we had Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central at this part. So Apicore P21 targets industrial distributors revenues up to $250 million. It's a very comparable product to your Info Cloud Suite uh, distribution. They are very pe well penetrated in the industrial verticals they compete head to head. The pros for Apicore P21 is the rich industrial ERP distribution system capabilities provided out of the box, best for prescriptive architecture. So when you need many different tools that are going to be your favorite and you are trying to integrate with P21, 
then your consulting cost might increase, the integration cost might increase. But if you are looking for a complete suite and you can replace all of those tools that or the ecosystem that comes as part of P21, then it could be a great product. The other advantage that you have with Epicor P21 is it's pre-integrated with the other best of breed industrial B2B systems such as your e-commerce systems as well as some of the channel integration systems. So those are going to be available with Epicor P21. The cons that you are going to have with P21 is limited capabilities to support diverse distributors. And this is the same limitation that you have with the Cloud Suite distribution SXE product as well. The technology is slightly legacy, even though it's going to be better than your Infor Cloud Suite. They have the cloud capabilities are going to be mature with your uh, enterprise search capabilities, mobility capabilities that might not be there with the Infor products. Uh, the ecosystem is going to be extremely limited as well from the consulting perspective as well as from the integration perspective. So that's number five. Now number four on our list is Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Last year we had FNO at this part. So Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central primarily targets FMCG distributors. That's where they have the large majority of their logos, they also have a lot of construction centric distributors on the platform. The Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is a very generic vanilla solution, but it does have global capabilities from the compliance perspective. So this is going to be extremely friendly for companies that might be penetrated in several geographies where other solutions might not be present, you are going to have the consulting base that is going to be very deeply penetrated globally. This is also fit for private equity companies that might be substantially fragmented and they are trying to be on one or a couple of solutions. So if you're looking for an ERP solution in the small to mid-sized space to streamline all of your portfolio companies, then Business Central could be a great product. Now, the pros for BC is that it's a rich distribution ERP systems capabilities natively supported. You are going to have capabilities such as your bins, license plate, all of those capabilities are built as part of the product. The way your supply chain is structured, it's very friendly for your SMB, FMCG distributors. You have the cloud native architecture, so the technology is not as legacy as some of the other products. And then you have global capabilities as well as the ecosystem. The cons for BC is, limited capabilities to support diverse distributors and it's it can support FMCG distributors very well, but industrial distributors might not be as well supported. You will require far more development, integration for industrial distributors. Some of the add-ons that you're gonna find, even though you're gonna find many add-ons in the BC space, but those add-ons may not be as proven as well as the consulting network may not be as business savvy in the Microsoft ecosystem, as well as the ecosystem is not. So that's number four. <music> Now, number three on our list is Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO. Last year, we had SAP S4 HANA at this part. So Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO targets larger distributors with revenue exceeding a billion dollar and more than 10 to 20 entities globally. So this is targeted for upper mid-market segment when you are looking for alternative for your SAP S4 HANA. One of the advantages that you are going to get with uh, FNO is that it's a very diverse product that is going to be extremely globally capable. So if you're looking for a solution that is going to be in several geographies, plus it can support many different business models, such as your manufacturing, construction, field service as part of the same product, that's where Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO is going to be really handy. So the pros for Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO is operationally richest cloud product compared to other enterprise products. For example, if you compare this with SAP or Oracle, it is going to have operationally rich functionality, especially for distributors. The architecture is very cloud native, as well as the integration that you have with some of the other best of breed products. For example, your CRM or field service product, the integration is done at the data model level. So you are going to have much tighter data integrity that you might not find with the other CRM products that you have in the market. So that's a huge plus for Microsoft Dynamics 365 FNO. The cons for 365 FNO is 
the financial traceability as well as the audit support. So if you compare this with uh, other comparable solution, such as your SAP S4 HANA, it does not have the same transactional maps or the audit support or the traceability that you are going to find with the SAP products just because they are built for those use cases. And it's not as proven for that Fortune 1000 enterprise workloads. So upper middle market companies are okay, but Fortune 1000 companies, especially when you look at thicker transactions for distribution where you have to explore the unit costing, where you are hitting uh, you know thousands and thousands of GL entries with each of the scenarios, that's where uh, it might struggle with the enterprise workloads and it might be overwhelming for SMB companies. So that's number three. <music> Now, number two on our list is SAP S4 HANA. Last year, we had Acumatica is this particular spot. So SAP S4 HANA targets larger distributors with revenue exceeding a billion dollar and more than 10 to 20 entities, especially for global scenarios. Now, the beauty with SAP S4 HANA is it has several best of breed solutions, such as your SAP EWM product, which can not only work with the distributors, but a lot of these distributors are going to have 3PL business model. They have very complicated processes with their billing, invoicing, and they require tight integration with the ERP processes. And that's where SAP S4 HANA really shines when you have very diverse business model, including your distribution, 3PL, field service, as well as manufacturing, all of them can be covered by SAP S4. It is also going to be very global solution that can host many different countries where several different solutions might not be available in those countries. So the pros for SAP S4 HANA is the large workloads, especially when you look at the power of SAP HANA, when you look at very involved transactions that require deeper transactional capabilities or transactional processing power. For example, when you are going to have serialized products that typically put a lot of strain on your system. And when you are looking at millions and millions of journal entries per hour, that's where you require very enterprise centric workload where a lot of other products might struggle or they might take forever to process those transactions. SAP S4 HANA is really designed for those workloads. The best of breed architecture for distributors, especially if you're looking for tight embeddedness on the transactions. For example, let's say if you look at your integration with other configurator centric processes or with the e-commerce centric processes, that's where the integration is going to be handy or you are going to feel tight embeddedness with the SAP S4 HANA product. The ecosystem is very prevalent. So you are going to find a lot of best of breed solutions that are already going to be part of their ecosystem and the financial traceability and control is one of the best and that's why SAP S4 HANA is one of the best product for publicly traded companies or the regulated companies. Now the cons for SAP S4 HANA is weak operational capabilities for the cloud. The cloud product is not as mature as on-prem version as well as it's going to be expensive and it's going to be overwhelming for smaller companies just because of the amount of training, the consulting support, as well as uh, the implementation support that you are going to require that could get very expensive and you might have adoption challenges as well in the SMB space. But having said that, SAP S4 HANA is a very strong product and that's why it ranks at number two on our list. <music> Now, number one on our list is NetSuite. Last year also, we had NetSuite at this spot. NetSuite targets SMB distributors with up to a billion dollar in revenue with several entities globally. One of the advantages that you have with NetSuite, NetSuite can work with very small companies, but it can also work with very large companies or it has been proven with very large companies in the upper mid market. So it can cover a lot of different grounds. It also has one of the most prolific ecosystem where you are going to find many different solutions that are going to be friendly for distributors, whether you're looking for any of the WMS solutions, TMS solutions, or looking for e-commerce solutions, all of those are going to be part of the NetSuite ecosystem. The ecosystem is going to be weaker with the other products. NetSuite is also good product when you, when you are a holding company and you are trying to streamline all of your entities in one solution, NetSuite could act as that corporate ledger when the large majority of entities you can host on NetSuite, but you are only going to require a few entities that might be hosted on the other ERP systems if NetSuite may not support all of those operational workflows natively as part of the product. But
but then you are going to find several add-ons. With other solutions, you, either you are going to require a separate ERP system in those geographies where other ERP systems might not be as strong, or you would require that for the operational model. So that's where NetSuite provides a lot overall, and that's why it is super strong. So the pros for NetSuite is it is really strong in those B2C, FMCG, CPG centric data model as well as processes. It has been proven in that space for those transactions. It has global financial capabilities. So when you are going to have global CPG companies and you are looking for that financial ledger, that's where NetSuite is really strong as well as the ecosystem is one of the strongest point for NetSuite. Now the cons for NetSuite is the pricing and costing layers are not going to be as scalable for B2B verticals, especially if you are looking for industrial distribution verticals, that's where NetSuite is, the pricing and costing layers are not going to be as scalable. So you will require a lot of workarounds. The experience is going to be patchy overall in fitting in those industrial B2B verticals. The limited capabilities for diverse distributors, even though it is very strong for those FMCG, CPG centric verticals, but it, it is not as strong with the industrial distribution verticals and not necessarily designed for the enterprise workloads that you are going to find with SAP or Oracles of the world. But having said that, NetSuite does cover very large market and that's why it is number one solution on our list. If you enjoyed this video, we are going to include the link of an article that is going to have much deeper analysis. So check that out. Also, we publish these videos on a weekly basis. So if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you might want to do that. Also, this uh, podcast is available in the audio form on Apple, Spotify. So you may want to check there and subscribe. And if you have not checked our digital transformation report for 2024, we are going to link that as well. So you might want to check that. On that note, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.